crushing you if you get in the way. Crush. Ten years in the league and now broadcasting for the Houston Rockets. Ryan, how did you like your hype video, Ryan? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm feeling myself right now. Okay. They, they, they act like they forget I even played basketball sometimes, man. <laughs> Show that to all the kids so that they know that this is real. Uh, he's been broadcasting for the Rockets for a minute now. And, um, yeah, I want to just get into it because this team, this team was kind of fun. And they made quite the comeback and they improved their win total by 17. And for a, a hot second there, thought they were going to catch the Warriors. So you have a front row seat night in, night out. What have you seen as far as improvement with this squad? Man, um, the, the three-headed horse right here came into uh, Houston. Uh, first off, Ime Udoka. I think he's the best coach in basketball. He's right up there, uh, obviously. I like to compare him. If Pop was a former player, if Pop played some years in the league, that's what Ime is, okay, if that makes sense. Then he's a dog. He's he's leading the league in text. Come on, fellas. You know when your coach get a tech, he ride for you, you want to go and hoop. He, got the, he has the X's and O's, and he just brought a toughness to Houston where he's teaching these guys how to play and his show. Houston is that team that you don't want to match up with. Um, and then to me, what's even more impressive is the team was able to go on that streak Without Al Prince you could argue Al P has been the, the best player on the team. The Jalen got hot. You could say he's one of the hottest players in the whole NBA, but that's just E Man, the next man up type of mentality. Fred Van Fleet has chain, changed our ball club from one of the worst teams uh, hmm. in turnovers to arguably the one of the best, if I'm not mistaken, the best in Rockets history with an assist to turnover ratio as a team for, for a franchise. So that's huge. Uh, the, the team would have 20 plus turnovers. It's like, there's no way you win with turning the ball over. And then Dylan Brooks has just turned everybody into villains. Uh, our guys talk trash. They're chippy. They're elbowing. And I remember the first couple of games in preseason when Dylan played, like, and, like you have four guys playing at one speed and then Dylan will be going wild. And it took a while for the Rockets kind of respond and say, okay, that's what it is. That's how, uh, how we play. So those three have absolutely been culture changers here in Houston. And I can't be more excited. I know this season's not over, but next season, oh man, it, it, it's going to be one special one. Yeah. Next season, are you thinking playoffs next season for sure? Don't have me quoting nothing, Dilo. That's not that's not for me. That's for the players to do. But um, and you just I, said I'll all that to not want to be a playoff on, team. Stand on. Oh my hey, god! Hey, hey, hey. Come, come right, on, Luke, come on, Luke. I'd be very, I'd be that, very surprised if it did happen. Hey, for those who don't know, me, when me and Lou played in the G League, our coach out sent me my creep. He would talk about the opposing team. He'd go, I'm just licking my chops when I see somebody <laughs> come around. So me and Lou see each other through the career. Man, we go, Lou, I'm about, to, I'm about to have problems with you tonight, man. He was in Philly. I'd be in Boston, L.A. we go at it, man. So uh, good stuff there, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Tari Eason. You know we, you know we got to talk about it. It was a beautifully done moment, but a moment where we all went, mm -mm -mm, not a good idea. Warriors come out to play. <laughs> You're not playing. Then you wear the T-shirt day of game, and then we know how that game plays out and everything that goes with it. I got to ask, when you guys saw it as broadcasters and, and members of this team, what were you thinking? And what was everyone? I mean, I'm looking at Dylan Brooks on the screen. Did anybody say anything like, yo, just change the shirt, do something? I, no, I'm not sure what was said in, in the locker room. I, I don't think Dylan, uh, if, of all people, had any problem with it. You see Dylan's like Fair. sitting right next to me, dog. We're going right out tonight. <laughs> um, but but we all know, um, and Tari may not know, just the respect that you have to have for those world champs. And, and, and Chandler Lou, we knew when we got in the league, we didn't have respect for some of them OGs because they didn't turn into what they were until it was playoff time, until it was time for them to, you know, kind of become themselves. And, and it just put that, it just woke up the Warriors just a little bit uh, enough. And they've been playing great basketball. You guys know it. Draymond is, 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 you know, Draymond does some silly things. He goes over the board sometimes. But the thing Draymond knows is how to get his team motivated. He's willing to sacrifice himself. So if people don't know, Draymond made the first comment and said, I don't care about the Warriors, uh, about the Rockets. I don't care about the Rockets. So sorry, like, you don't care about my guys. We, we ain't worried about you. You know, like, what, what's right. going on? So, you, come on. Is, you, know, you know, the problem is he wasn't playing. That's the beat. Now, if Dylan Brooks or Fred or, or uh, one of the Jalen, one of those guys wear the shirt, completely different. But if you can't contribute to, the, to how this game is going to go, we ain't trying to hear it, bro. We ain't trying to hear it. Like, get out the way. You know oh, those nah. guys. You don't play. <laughs> Lou, Lou, make no mistake, Lou, you're right. It's, it's a lesson learned. 
And um, I learned one of those lessons one time. You know, I was on the bench in Charlotte and, you know, guys, Chandler, you know, I run my mouth. I'm always talking. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I didn't just run my mouth on TV. I was running my mouth in the game. And um, Bean came into town. Kobe came into town. And I'd always talk trash. Man, Bre- Brevin Knight done this, done this, slapped me on the bench, dog, upside my head and said, do not say anything to Kobe. Do not wake him up. Because if you wake him up, I got a guard. We got to see him. Don't zip it. If he shoot, he meant just silence the whole time. So, yes, young fella wasn't out there. Um, he has that type of motor. He's a dog. Even you heard Draymond say, I fool with Tari Eason personally. He called him out. So those are the things that our young guys are going to have to learn is is the mental game, okay? Like the mental game. So they ain't scared of nothing. They just got to learn how to fine tune it. That's why we're so excited in Houston. Yeah, my my problem was obviously that he wasn't <laughs> playing, but also poked a bear, but not not the Warriors. <laughs> Anybody but the Anybody. Warriors. But Ryan, he talked about Jalen Green. He was on fire since the beginning of March, averaging twenty six six and four. Um, just dominant. Do, do you think he has it to be the number one guy on a playoff team? And when Sangoon comes back, how are they going to mix these two together and have them both playing at high levels and have it work as one of these duos going forward? Man, I love that question, Chandler. The the main thing that I pulled away, does he have it? It is that thing that you can't really explain. Why did Lou Will, every time the buzzer was ready to go off, he found a way to just make something happen. Jalen Green has it. But Jalen Green this season has been going through this refining process through one of the best coaches I've seen, where Ime's like, dog, I don't care who you are, what you look like. If you're not defending, if you're not doing the little things, you're not going to be playing. And when Jalen bought into that, everything went like this. Everything has gone like this. So, yes, I think he has it. It's on Jalen to put in the work. It's on Jalen to humble himself. And these are the things that we saw. And him to understand, hey, man, this is what it's going to look like for me to be the guy. Now, since he's been on the flamer, what he was happening, and you guys know this, and Lou, we've seen this happen when you get hot, he's been getting trapped and double teamed, and he'll have the ball in the pick and roll, and guys are going to get the ball out of his hands. Dallas, our, our guys lost to that, that Dallas game. J. Kidd, off rip, double team, get the ball out of his hands. Go make him a passer. So, as you said, how are he and Alperin Shingun going to fit? Alperin Shingun is a guy who's been all season long getting double teamed on the block. He didn't see single coverage until he saw Wimby. And I drank, think he dropped about 45 on Wimby. We remember that, okay? That's the first time that young boy saw single coverage. So now you got a guy in a pick and roll, but you got a double team to get the ball in his hands. When he gets double teamed, what's he going to do? I'll go eat, big fella. I'll P go eat, big fella. He's got some of the most unbelievable hands. He may have eyes in the back of his head and arg- in the back of his head, and he may be arguably right behind uh, Jokic and Sabonis the best passing big, one of the best passing bigs in the NBA. So um, that's how they're going to fit. The challenge for those two, we're going to be transparent, defense. If those two can defend, be in the right spot, be a a, a student uh, in in the defensive playbook and adjustments, now we're talking about Houston really cooking uh, at at a national scene. Crazy, crazy times. Let's talk a little Victor Wimbanyama, shall we? He's a tall man. You're a tall man uh, against Houston. He was he almost had the quad double, and I am just waiting for it to happen at some point. What do you see when you see him? I mean, I don't want to say how amazed are you. I just assume you are. So go on. One beetle, of course you're gonna go straight to Spurs. You couldn't <laughs> wait to get to Spurs and Beetle. No, okay, no. we know we know about that. Um, I do it every day, man. I, <laughs> I think he's gonna. I, all seriousness, I think he's gonna be the face of the NBA. Um, he 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 kind of got the swagger. Uh, he understands American culture. Uh, he's big. Uh, you you know, big guys normally aren't marketable. Why? Because we don't dribble, shoot three. We don't have the highlights. This dude is a walking highlight. Um, I remember talking to shout out Sean Elliott, man, the legend Sean Elliott, yeah. and Sean was like Ryan because I asked him the same thing. He said Ryan. Every time I see him, he does something I've never seen in the sport of basketball. Guys, we, uh, we've been playing since we were little. We're in our 40s now. We got guys in the 50s and 60s. They are saying they're seeing things from him that you've never seen in the sport of basketball. Easy. I'm, I'm, I'm 37, Ryan. Take it Shut easy. Shut up, Lou. You're almost 40. Hey. <laughs> Hey, big fella, big fella, you're on the other side now, big fella. I'm 39, but I count 40, okay? Big fella, you're on the other side now. You got to accept it. We're behind the mic now, big fella. Yep, yep. <laughs> but in, in, all, in all seriousness, 
I think that Pop has taken this as a refining year for Wimby. I think he just threw him in a swimming pool, said, dog, figure out how to swim. Um, I think the game when he made out him guard Alp one on one, he tried to teach him a lesson. Oh, you don't want to do things my way. Play him straight up, young fella's gonna drop a drop drop forty five on you. So I, I think for him, he just got to figure things out. And as they put the right pieces around him, it's gonna be special. With all due respect, the Spurs didn't even know how to get him the basketball. He could he could go he could go forty and twenty if all he did is rim run, block shots. <laughs> And, and, and play around the rim. And the fact that he has a bag, so now um, he's a matchup nightmare. I, I think he's going to be that guy. And now Wimby, uh, he keeps on the progress that he's at. Michelle, our challenge is going to be how many championships does he get because he's far too good not to dominate. And uh, he, he's, in that, he's in that realm where LeBron should be giving that torch to him as long as those pieces are put in place around him. He, 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 it's, it's, it's the craziest thing. Because just, just at a simple level, I'll say this as a finish up, he can take the big guys outside and mix. He can take, and the challenge for him is taking the little guys in the paint and holding his ground. Right now, he can't hold his ground, but uh, when he figures that out, <laughs> it's, oh. it's going to be it's gonna be a problem. I know there's a three on one moment last night in that Grizzlies game. It was just a it's funny video to watch if you know if you're bored. Um, I want to bring back a quote you had in 2019 about Giannis said he was uh, the most overrated in basketball. Well, fast forward a, a couple years here and now we've arrived. Have you changed your mind at all on Giannis? Where do you have him now? He was overrated. He was he was overrated at that time. So that wasn't for the Hoopers. That was for my colleagues. Let's let's put this on right. I'm glad you brought this up. This is for a lot of my colleagues at ESPN that were overhyping and calling Giannis. And I, by the way, I love Giannis. Don't mistake none of this. That were saying Giannis is Michael Jordan. Giannis is this. And his numbers were astronomical. Astronomical. They were there. So I was saying at that moment he should walk away with the championship. All that. At that moment, he was overhyped. At that moment. But I love Giannis. I love his story. He's a throwback. He plays every night. He's a dog. He works. He loves his teammates even more so. He take care of his family. If he goes somewhere, his brothers be right there with him. So um, at that moment, I did not think that they were putting him on the right pedestal. I think he's deserving of all his all of his accolades he's put into work. So when I say over over hyped, that was from my ESPN colleagues, not for the real hoopers. We all knew he had to develop that jump shot. We knew that young that young boy was a dog, and we knew the right pieces need to be put around him. So that was not a, a shot to him or anything like that. It was just more so for 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 my colleagues at the time that were like, we're looking at Michael Jordan. It's like, nah, he's not Mike right now. He's he's on that pace. Uh, but they, so that's that's what it was for. That's what it's for. I love me some Giannis, man. Shout out to Freak and, ho- and get well soon, brother. Speaking of uh, <laughs> staying on my walk, you and I both play for Doc. You play for him on two separate occasions. Um, they've had their struggles in Milwaukee since since bringing Doc in. Right decision, wrong decision, bringing him in mid season. What what's your opinion on bringing Doc in? This was going to be tough for anybody to do it mid season. And I'm not sure who who pulled the trigger on it, but Doc is in a lose lose situation. You know they had their scheme set up; uh, they are already prepared. Uh, whether you love to hate uh, uh, Coach Griffin, I always believe in writing things out. So I think a mid season change that should have happened before. So I don't know if there was something they wanted to do before the season, but that timing uh, was horrible because not right now. Doc is going to be uh, the the scapegoat. And I don't think that all the blame um, necessarily should go to him. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, it's, it puts him in a very, very tough situation. Um, for Doc, we know this. It, it takes you a while to kind of get used to what Doc wants to wants to do. And he can draw it up the X's and O's with absolutely the best of them. So I, I think the challenge was to say, hey, we know Doc was able to go in. And, yeah, we're all going to go back to those Boston days with that big three. And he made things work with some big personalities. Doc knows how to manage personalities. But Doc has to go back and get him another chip the way that he did in Boston. So I think they maybe they wanted to get somebody more respected. I think the timing was off. So whoever pulled the trigger on it, I, I think it, it was it was poor judgment on that time. Either wait till the season rise out, let Adrian have a chance, see if he can get a championship or do it before the season. But when it happened, um, I, I didn't agree with it, and I think it is tough. And I think for, for Doc, he's just going to have to take accountability. He's going he's to have to eat all the criticism right now. And, and Doc's been there before. He was booed in Boston, and he was celebrated a few seasons after. So um, he's been around this league long enough. Oh, you got your own personal emojis going up right there. I, yeah, I see, I I see, like Chandler, I see Chandler's a little curious with the thumbs yeah. up keep popping up. 
No, I, oh, what? I, I, I was gonna ask y'all the same thing. I don't know if the producers are just showing me love, hyping me up right now. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Thank you. Hold him up. Hold him up. Say like things will happen. We can just do an hour of this, y'all. Oh, is that no, me? Oh, oh, snap. <laughs> We're well, wizards, y'all. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing right hey, now. Ryan, hey. Ryan, appreciate the time. Love the nice open floor plan. A big fan of that as well. I uh, hope you'll come back soon. <laughs> <Enjoy>. <laughs> hey, any any time. This, hey, Chandler and Lou, I love seeing y'all on the dark side, fellas. Congratulations yeah. to the dark side. You're killing it. <laughs> Look at it, man. Y'all know we go way back. Shout out to y'all boys. Could not be happier. And Beetle, by, by the by time you bring your boy on, man, by the time you bring your boy on. I know, on. right? We waited. We, we, we're saving you for the end there. We're saving you for the end. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll talk soon. We'll be back. Anytime, guys. Run it over. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over.